And we'll see about the Senna and Tom Kench as well, because that has definitely been one of the emerging intricacies yeah. with the pick ban. We always have, over the course of the tournament, some of these little tweaks as we get further and further, deeper and deeper in. And we saw really excellent play from T1 yesterday, protecting Gumayushi on the Jinx, of course. Uh, as being able to use the top catch with Senna. Well, there is uh, both of Aiming's champions taken away here. Zaya and Kaiser have been by far his favorites. Uh, of course, does have a pretty extensive champion pool. I don't want to say the Ezreal word. Oh, no, I did. There, there I go. But he is certainly one wow, to fall back to We're failing at all these words. Yeah, these banned words. Oof, and it was an E I word think, as well. I think, actually, Talia is now unbanned as a word after <laughs> after Palafox Talia yesterday. So we'll continue kind of uh, down the, be the beaten path here with BDD synonymous with oh, this year. Yeah. So that is a no-brainer first pick. Insta-lock there. So much confidence in this player on his ear. And I wonder whether D-plus are going to go towards some of that Tom Kench priority that we're starting to see crop up. Certainly is something that uh, Kellen has played a lot in the past. Um, but there's the Caitlyn. It managed to get through the draft. Deft already 1-0 and on this champion so far, but it's instead going to be an Aphelios. So makes me a little bit sad, Kobe, because I think that uh, Caitlyn is something that they have leveraged extraordinarily well. So we could be looking at an Aphelios oriana double carry composition style from D-plus. I want to see what they're going to protect the Aphelios with though um, because that, that has been one of the big weak points of, of these 80 carries that don't have their own dashes yeah. don't have their own self peel ultimates either well there's the rumble going to be locked in for counter a lot of power towards that top side of course Keen not necessarily a notable rumble player himself um, but kind of has found some decent success as the Zeri is going to be locked in I think we're going late game with some of these supports as Lahens on one of his favorites. And you were talking so much about aiming really needing an AD carry with mobility there. Yeah. Derry still has it, even with the five base move speed nerf uh, onto this patch that we went into with. So, will be a lot of scaling for KT here though, with Zeri and Azir as your carries. And basically, aiming just needs to get out of jail free card. If he has uh -huh. one of those. Jump through the wall. Yeah, jump through the wall is a pretty good one, uh, you'd have to say. But there is Jarvan being considered as well. Phenomenal combination alongside the Rumble and something that Canyon can certainly get work done on uh, throughout the early stages of this game. And the early game is going to be extraordinarily important. We're actually going over some stats together and I'll let you guys at home know. Um, both of these teams, 15 minutes, have above an 85% win rate uh, across the year. Um, so we've so, decided for this series, we're going to call each game at 15 minutes. Yep. And, <laughs> yep. and, uh, and then we're going to just play music uh, from 15 minutes onwards, uh, and uh, we'll just enjoy it as it plays out. But uh, we assume that the game is going to... No, it's not true. Uh, but we'll see exactly who's going to be able to draft towards early game a little bit more effectively. So far, it's definitely D+, plus with Zeri and Azir on the other side. All right, let's see them whittle down a few more of these jungles here. Trying to take out Tank at front line. So they split it. Sejuani and the Kai, uh, Kasante. No more answer here for Keen. It's been interesting to see people's attempted answers into this Rumble. Yeah. Rumble has just really been a top lane pick that has had huge priority and and especially in winning lane early and then transferring that power into the early Rift Herald. So locking up the Rel with the Aphelios does mean they're looking a very offensive look with this D-plus squad, not trying to peel back for the Aphelios, does have a lot of CC options <laughs> and... Oh, he's gonna oh, lock it! It's the, the Keen the special! Keen rise. All the, right! We've been waiting for some range uh, options into the Rumble because it, it has been difficult for people to try and play um, the super popular and common top lane chips. So we get the double lock in here though. Viego comes through, another sought after one, that dueling AD threat from jungle. If you're locking in double AP solo laners, you definitely need that AD jungler. So like KT rounding it out here. Yeah, really cool. Of course, Kane has been pretty successful on this champion in the past. There is the Nico locked in for Showmaker though. A lot of team fight for D+. And as far as red side drafting is concerned, I actually feel like d is going to walk away pretty happy from this one. But if, if KT can get to 30 minutes in this game, I have a feeling they're going to be pretty happy. Yeah, I was going to say, d is very happy, especially if we are actually calling the game at 15 minutes. Yeah, because, right. Because they have a lot of early game possibilities here. But the, the late Viego pick, that really is going to be kind of the bridge for KT. What can Cuz do to kind of get them there? A lot of control possible for him. Plus, we have a big, big magnifying glass on both of these supports. 
Both of these support yeah. players are guilty of inting Alistar, and so they banned themselves with Alistar this time around, but they have gone with two frontline support champions, and we'll see who gets added more to the death fund, the Alistar or the Rel this time around. Yeah, I mean, Kellen was definitely uh, the talk of the town after that Alistar performance, but I still have my hands just standing there, waiting <laughs> to die in their last matchup, and that is just scoured into my brain. I really want to get rid of that, so hopefully they have a clean performance here today. Of course, we're going to be sending one of these teams home. The other one is heading towards knockouts. D-plus on our fourth seed. KT were very close to being our first seed after an incredible regular season with M50 Post buying a resurging T1. And KT should theoretically be your favorites moving into this one. My opinion is, I have no opinion. I have no idea. Yeah, we'll see who's stronger. KT 5-0 so far in summer versus D+. But D+, running the lower bracket, they have the unbreakable spirit on their team. They have Canyon and Showmaker trying to get back to their glory days. And now and we can hear as well the fan chants erupting throughout the KBS arena. Uh, feels a little bit like home, you know, it feels like low park. It does. I was looking around when we first got up to the caster booth also, uh, and I saw all of these Canyon, Showmaker uh, jerseys over yeah, here, and I was yeah. like, oh, this this must be the, the D-plus side of the arena. <laughs> and then I looked at the rest of the arena, and they're just everywhere. Deaf jerseys everywhere. Uh, so it seems like D-plus definitely have some crowd favor. They certainly do. Um, just a reminder, guys, you can connect your League of Legends account with Prime Gaming. You can grab the exclusive experimentation emote, um, and then you can flaunt your stuff. Of course, uh, Heimerdinger always reminds me of a, uh, a certain previous D-plus support. <laughs> Um, then now DRX support. Uh, that support has been on your mind all day, Atlas. I, no, he's always on my mind. It's just permanently on my mind. Uh, that's, that's how it goes. I have a feeling he's still going to somehow find a way to win Worlds. Uh, we'll see whether he can. Here on this bottom side, um, Death and Kellen. Sometimes, as the NFLs in, uh, in some of these matchups, you can have a rough time early. But against Eric, you're probably not going to. You don't necessarily see too much of that action. Game. But Ignite has been taken on the top side of the map by Tana, following the Hoon rules. You love to see it. We'll see whether it's actually going to be successful up into the rise, because Kane has been a great rise player for years. And he might just be able to bully this Rumble up towards the top side. Speaking of bullying, a bit of trouble here in mid lane. Yeah, sure, we're doing a good job harassing him. I mentioned it before, but um, APA posted on Twitter one of the little tricks with Nico, talking about, oh, cute little hook. He's going to connect onto Death there. Kellen just standing in front of his AD carry to try and keep him alive, but a good trade for KT already. If you uh, if you are Nico and you transform into the minion as your spells, man, then you can count as a minion so you don't proc or the rules for uh, Doran Shield region that proc only when champions hit you. That's fun. We'll see whether uh, Showmaker is going to utilize that tech. Generally, uh, Showmaker is known for really good emote tech. Um, he uh, was about to get a solo kill, I seem to remember, it was a couple of years ago, but managed to get the Teemo emote up in the middle of a play, which I thought was pretty impressive. I want to see how fully they embrace the Braum meta as well. <laughs> That's the true. The Braum emotes have been taking over. Which ones? Which one do you think is better? Is it okay? Uh, but he didn't take a bit of damage, but I think he's going to be all right. Is take notes better or is the Brahma mode better? Because I loved the take notes. I mean, I, I did love the take notes. That one's really good for when you make a misplay. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. Your dead body. But the Brahm just, it's so its so good. It, it really does resemble like a Keck W. Yeah. That's so true. it's uh, gets everybody laughing. Here we go, though. We get our first move after uh, Diego here. Cuz has finally finished up his full clear into his Scuttle Crab. And so. Junglers, you can see on the mini map, hovering towards mid, but that's going to be it. Everybody gets out. Yep. Uh, Cuz gives away his position. Canyon knows exactly what's going on. Rift Scuttlers will be traded, like you were talking about. Canyon shouting out Fnatic here, which is fantastic, you know, supporting them uh, before they play um, later on today. I mean, there was also interesting skin tech with that particular skin earlier on that Riot quickly fixed and changed, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Where, the, where it would be a lot quicker with the flag animation. So happy to, to clean that one up in time. 
calmly starting out, calmly starting out my LCK experience, Atlas. I feel like this is very accurate, you know? Oh, absolutely. We're double LCK teams farming away, opposite sides of the desk. It's, it's an immersive experience. Um, basically, you need to learn how to not talk about what's happening on the screen um, as much as possible. But I think you're pretty gifted in that department, Kirby. I think you'll be absolutely fine. We, we delve pretty deep into <laughs> the uh, caverns of the mind <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Thankfully, we've been able to deal with the jet lag pretty easily this time around. Yep. Um, Tremaker with his fake Inferno uh, in the mid lane is having a bit of a good time. And BDD trying his best. You can see losing out on the health trades, but you just have to look at the CS numbers to know that it's pretty much fine uh, and there's not really too much to go off. I think the jungle is where we're going to see most of our action surround. Yeah. And BDD kind of expecting that for this matchup too, it seems like, because he went with the Conqueror instead of that Hail of Blades that a lot of mid laners were using for more lane prio. So we'll have the Conqueror for later for those big fights. Meanwhile, Ooh. Mr. Canyon. Aiming, gonna get knocked up here. Canyon getting a decent amount of damage. Of course, no one's there for any follow-up, really, unless Kellen's flashing, but he's not going to. Aiming just going to be convinced to go home, and he might just uh, say yes to that. Meanwhile, Deft with the real Infernum gets the shove into Drake priority. So, our first true action of the game. Oh, okay. Showmaker walks to the side. That's the listing lazily to the left strategy. That is pretty good uh, for avoiding skill shots. It is going to work out. This is called a free dragon. Um, we do these quite a lot in the LCK, Kobe. Uh, it just means that we can stay calm. Everything's going to be 0 0 A OK. -okay. D plus will just get a few regen stats. Nice, from the ocean dragon. nice calming ocean dragon here for all of the laners. And the golf claps, they're <laughs> wrapped. Oh, is it going to be Cloud into Chemtech for the, like, least interesting possible? I mean, I love uh, Cloud, so, just don't get me wrong. But Chemtech, though, I, I would say Chemtech Rift is one of the oh, most that's exciting true. rifts. that's true. I'm more talking about the stats you get as a champion. Yeah. You're right. The, the Rift is better. Yeah, the Rift. Oh, but it is, like, you can use Blast Cones to get yourself to safety much more effectively. However, Nico utilizes Mega Blast Cones better than most other champions because you can pop blossom from a million years away. And Showmaker uh, is a bit of a that one. Showmaker is a bit of a troll sometimes too. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to see how fancy Showmaker gets with his Nico play. I also think that Showmaker has been DK's best player so far this tournament. I think he's had a standout uh, time here at Worlds so far, and he was one of the players that was really struggling throughout the regular season. Yeah. It's kind of his mojo. Uh, we know that Showmaker is a guy that does play around uh, confidence quite a lot. He's well aware of it, but hasn't been able to utilize it. But I, it feels like this world's some of that pizzazz is coming back. And I'm really happy to see specifically that because it was one of the heartbreaking stories. Hearing and, and listening to all of these interviews that Showmaker was giving. Yeah. You know, he was on the podcast with uh, one of his top lane friends last year talking about how he feels like he... He doesn't take as many of the risky, I'm better than you outplay maneuvers anymore. He's, he he's feels like he has started to get more safe. And then he started talking about, ah, seeing League of Legends more as a job instead of yeah. really enjoying it. Um, and then the super recent one this year, talking about how even again going against some of the big name mid laners, he would start to feel nerves and, and, and types of things creeping into his play. So really happy to see him playing confidently, playing well with this team. Because everybody dreams of those times. Canyon yeah. and Showmaker, the dynamic duo. And 2019 also, to 2021, some nice glory years. No, absolutely. And I think that like the Shy also has illustrated this. Like winning worlds as early as they did, it does mean that you don't quite put into context what kind of achievement that is until it's in your past, right? As Aiming's looking for a turret plate, he will be able to get it here. His D plus are gonna collect themselves a Rift Herald, uncontested once again. You continue to tell stories for it's about free. as long as you like there, Kobe. And of course, KT very happy to do this because they have Rise Azir Zeri. Um, I feel like we're gonna turn into those like wacky inflatable flailing tube people yeah, yeah. At, outside the gas station just shouting, it's free! Oh. Well, this might be free as well as Kellen is gonna get knocked up, crashes down to try and get out of the way and is gonna be able to flash to safety. Does have to put that one on cooldown. That was almost <laughs> some action with a result, and I guess having a flash down is, uh, is, is certainly that. <laughs> the flash down, the crash down, and the ignite down. 
Let's see. Uh, one for one summon a trait. There we go. <laughs> Balanced is all things should be. Especially because, even though it has a longer cooldown, he's got Hex Flash, so... Yeah, no, he and I, I say this all the time, I think early flashing with Hex Flash is how you get the most value out of that summon, uh, out of that Keystone choice. So it's it's quite possibly the most fun rune it's uh, nice. to ever use, yeah. so definitely want to get the most out of it. I think that, honestly, like, you should just flash at level 1. You know, get out of the fountain faster, you know, that's what I think. Um, some good old-fashioned all-chat uh, bait. Oh, that's, yeah. That's pretty rare nowadays. It's actually pretty hard because so many people are muted. Right? Yeah, it makes it a bit sad. However, uh, Kellen now has that one on cooldown and is now looking for a little bit of an opportunity. And aiming down on the bottom side. He's going to try and defend against uh, Death and Kellen as they do push up. He's got a fair bit of gold considering those plates that did go down. But, of course, with no kills. Uh-huh. Haven't been able to see any acceleration. Haven't seen any Zeri certification moments, as uh, as Wolf would say uh, in the LCK. We haven't really got there yet. We'll see whether aiming does get that slight advantage to really make Zeri feel like the old version. Yeah, pretty nice and calm scaling so far. We've got a big 10 CS lead in the top lane for Keen on his oh, rise. Oh, huge! Mm. Okay, so he's out of control. Um, out of Keen's going to have to be looked at here. Uh, we'll see what the canyon is gonna. Rod of Ages, Seraph build. So uh, he's he's looking for the the long con here, the double mana scaling build, and then we'll truly get to see why it's so iconic for him. And mm -hmm. yeah, maybe three items is when we're gonna start okay. fighting. Seraph, Rod deal. of Ages, fully stacked in the void stuff. Maybe. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, he might go Zonya's in the middle, and we Ooh. might be fighting on four items. Kobe, can, so. can we craft some theoretical battles in our mind <laughs> yeah, now yeah, absolutely while, while we're waiting? Do you want to cast Some them? Epic. <laughs> Let's try and cast together a moment that we're thinking about that might happen in the future. It could potentially happen now, as uh, the Cloud Drake's being started here by Canyon. Deft and Kellen are first on the roam. Showmaker moving up as well. It's going to be yeah. two rumbles. wonder where these equalizers are coming from. That is a teleport to the top lane, though. So, KT, you are not fighting this. Uh, you are giving up the second dragon, yeah. and you are moving away. Lahen's not quite getting the memo, but I think he is going to be able to take that and teleport to the top lane. Keen not going to get... Oh, he's going to get snared, actually. Showmaker demonstrating some hitbox shenanigans with his Nico. So, good rotation here, and they utilize the one teleport available to them to make sure it's just one turret plate and not two, but Atlas, uh -huh. that dragon was not free. That was a turret plate. Mm -hmm. There is a price tag on it. It might be cheap. It might be discounted. But it also means that D-plus are going to get this dragon uh, to start stacking, and it's not going to be the Chemtech Soul that we were talking about. It is a Hextech Soul. So, this will mean that uh, D-plus, th there could be more action because Hexgate's definitely going to be an avenue towards that, as Rift Herald is just going to charge through, and it's just Canyon getting the money, and KT are going to clear it up, so some turret plates do go over. Um, DK still behind in gold in trade for the Dragons. This might mean that we could get a little bit earlier action, because D-plus need that, right? Because they're the team that is going to eventually get outscaled uh, by KT, and so getting to the point where they have Soul available is going to be really strong. Let me tell you, though, when it does happen, uh -huh. it's going to be explosive. Oh, so good. So good. So I mean, good. we've so already seen what the team fights are going to look like in let's, the future. Let's start it out, Atlas. Uh -huh. We're creeping through the brush. Uh -huh. We drop our control ward. Kellen is there first oh. on the rail, ready for the flash ultimate crash down play. He starts it out. Kenyon follows up with the EQ cataclysm. Then Kata lays down the rumble <laughs> ultimate showmaker on the flank, and they wipe KT. Incredible. And in the meantime, Deft is taking the bot lane inhibitor turret <laughs> by himself. Absolutely extraordinary stuff. He will then take the inhibitor as well because oh. he doesn't like inhibitors, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. This time but last then it's gonna year. it's going to respawn <laughs> just when they least expect it. Just in time. And then all of KT, <laughs> they're coming out of the fountain, streaming out of the fountain. They ace D+, plus, and uh, that's all she wrote. So that is what uh, is there to look wow. forward to. Um, but we're not quite there yet. More yeah. turret plates on the menu here. Ten seconds until they fall down. Not actually going to get the last one. Showmaker does deter aiming from taking that. Stormraiser in hand for the Zeri. Mm. And a Kraken Slayer for death. And Stormraiser is, is pretty fun. Ever since the, the, the recent buffs, not so recent now, but uh, ever since uh, the buffs I... to Stormraiser, if the opponents do not have a super like hard tank, like a top lane tank, 
I do really like this item as a rush item for uh, for AD carries. You can say, hey, you know, Cannon's gonna get pretty tanky on that Jarvan. There's so much health in the Juggernaut combo, basically, yeah. with the Gore Drinker, with the Sojin. Um, Kellen, though, I think he might remain a little squishy. Yeah, uh, it's certainly uh, been what it seems. Let's have a look at the lane economy snapshot. Still, KT with some advantages. Thank you, MasterCard, for that one. But at the moment, I mean, we're not seeing anything that is uh, anything to write home about, Kobe. Uh, as, okay, this might act hey! be something. There's the Magnus on first blood at 15 minutes. Cuz is going to go down and Deft picks up the kill. And it's Kellen from the brush. Makes it happen on the rail. No hesitation there. And honestly, for, for D plus here, we're talking about they're getting so many objectives for free. This one, they actually get paid to take. Yeah. So that's that's even working double time. In the meantime, of course, KT, they did have BDD in the bottom lane. Bottom lane, outer tower taken for KT. Oh. Death, though. Yeah, teleport is going to come through, and now they're looking for a potential kill. The crash down should be available here, as there is the shattering strike. Pulls him back, and lands goes down, too. Well, well, well. This seems like a landslide starting to uh, build here. No, we're plus. waiting for the late game. Okay. Uh, KT, just uh, don't worry okay. about it. Just a couple don't kills. Worry about it. Yeah. Uh, there's no need to get E word um, about anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're just scaling. But no, this is definitely a great play for D plus, and the fact that they still have tempo with them taking the Rift Herald the whole time. Man, you couldn't ask for more. I love it from Kellen. I mean, Rel, the, the the main combo you need is to be able to Q flash. He goes immediately for the Q flash. He got the full engage there, and then Deft uses his stopwatch. And they get the answer kill on Lehens as well. And that one was just an easy Q, no flash for Lehens. So one more for the Nautilus death fund. And also Deft not being caught window shopping there either. Really quick on the trigger finger after the, the flash dredge line from Lehen, so really and, nicely played for And that. it's a pretty early stopwatch for an AD carry to have. Um, so definitely, if you're not constantly spamming the tab, updating to check, might be caught unawares. Won't have it for this uh, soul point fight though. D plus certainly looking for that one as oh, in they go, cuz going to get Cataclysm, has to heartbreak it to get himself out of it, but now won't have his ultimate canyon. In a similar boat though, they're still looking to utilize the advantage that they have with vision. Move towards this dragon. KT not wanting to give this one up. Teleport is going to come through now as Kane looking to make himself known in this game. Kana can utilize the equalizer. They do manage to make it through the choke point. Canyon and Canna a little bit further forward as DK getting towards death, trying to make sure that he stays safe. One more. He's going to bring him just Kane. And there is the rune prison onto Canyon. The equalizer comes down. Oh, that's a under two, though. And DK will wipe them out. Only a couple of kills in the drain. Will reset. But I have a feeling he plus can just go back and take it as Kane. Drake. This is starting to look very D plus favorite. It certainly is. Deft is back and look at Showmaker on the flank. Look at the angle aiming on control vision. BDD is going to be able to skate his way out of this. Showmaker just making sure that he has full information, but this is going to be sole point for D plus Kia. And KT kind of reeling now. Yeah, as much as we scaling on this team with the Rise, with the Azir, with the Zeri, we are outpaced by D plus. Well, look at Canyon and he got hooked in a combo. He did a nice flag and drag over to the rest of his team though. So Showmaker is able to come in and peel for him. Then he gets the triumph peel. So he's just fine. They can reset Dragon and as you know, keep to that very quick Dragon stacking pace towards their Dragon soul. The, this game, only 18 and a half minutes in here. KT, they're trying to scale, but D plus are just outpacing them so quickly with all the Dragons and the kills. And I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier with the 15 minute rule for both of these teams. The first blood happened at 14 minutes and 50 seconds. That was when D plus just managed to get an advantage and maybe you know, KT looked at the clock at that stage and they're like, where, where are the stats, guys? Let's just focus on game two. That is definitely not what happened. They uh, tried their hardest around that Drake fight, but certainly d is just snowballing. And it is starting to get out of control. Of course, KT, they can find some of these miracle fights. And I want to remind you, there is a play that we've been replaying over and over again. And it's BDD on the Azir finding four people 
in that game, they were behind about 5,000 gold or something like that. It was a big lead for D-plus, and it wasn't enough to close it out against this man's Azir. So it is not over till it's over, but it is difficult. Even though they still have an advantage, a uh, slight gold advantage for AT. Of course, the Dragons will skew that uh, towards D-plus. But an interesting scenario when we feel like D-plus has such a, a good position in this game and a 4-0 up in kills. But with that extra turn, the first turn blood and some plates, AT is still doing well for me. So much of it with these Dragons that D-plus are stacking here. Only three minutes on that clock, Atlas, and we're going to get a large team fight. KT will finally bring down the hammer. Mm -hmm. And aiming has not died yet. So if in this next team fight, aiming walks away with a couple of kills, then this game could be a very, very different story. But uh, a Zeri that doesn't really get going at any point in the game does feel somewhat beatable. So we're going to skate his way out. Canyon, of course, is pretty scary. D plus setting traps, finding opportunities where they can. Yeah, I think the biggest thing D plus need to look for is try and get the rest of the outer towers because their comp winning towards the mid stages of the game is going to rely a lot on uh, the engage from Showmaker from Kellen. So if you can take down more of these areas of defense for KT, get the all the outer towers down, then you have a lot more room to work with trying to push into the jungle, get your wards, get a lot of flank angles for your engagers and actually put some more pressure onto these scaling KT carries. Speaking of scaling, KT, Kane has picked up uh, his Rod of Ages, nine stacks, very, very close to maxing that one out to get that extra level. Seraph's Embrace also done, so the two item spikes are really starting to turn up here for KT. Quick Blades as well, Storm Razor, and then you've got Nashes and Ludens done for BDD as well. So if there is a time to fight, might be an opportunity. However, nothing to really fight over unless they want to start an early Baron, so D-plus able to uh, put some money together, maybe get a Zonyas for Showmaker perhaps, a Void Staff for Kanna's second item, Void Staff, is pretty early here, but running double AP does incentivize a lot of Merc Treads, you can see there's four of them on KT, so getting through yeah. a bit of that magic resist does make some sense. Yep, definitely love it there. So much mag magic resist early on on the KT squad. KT happy though, as you're saying, everybody on their two item power spikes, except for jungle, They'll be pretty happy about fighting the next dragon. All gonna come down to that one. Yep. Just have to see whether D Plus can get all of their two items together. Bit of a back coming through for Kane. We'll see where the, where he's gonna go next. I'd like to see like Blighted Jewel or something like that, but instead it is gonna be the Zonyas, which are kinda suspected, or at least a stopwatch for now. Make sure that this next team fight is going to work out. The stopwatch count, something that Brendan Valdez really <laughs> does well. Yeah. Uh, so far, there are a couple uh, picked up for KT and one on the Nico uh, for D+. And those are what you want to buy when you know so much of the game comes down to the next big dragon fight because the value of it, of a one-time use for one single fight, is so astronomically high. This is when you want to win a team fight, right before this Drake is coming up. Kenny, you can see in the brush, heated up on the rumble right now. Is the extendo beam not going to find too much? Pop loss in the brush. Stop two. Beaded, he gets the Empress Divide off, but he's still going to die. And Keen, he'll break that stopwatch, but his life is still over for now. Two swift kills on the solo lanes, and deep plus they can move towards Soul. And it's a beautiful disengage after they get their two kills here for D plus. They know the rest of KT, and they're just hoping to fish around for something in the stragglers, but D-plus give them nothing. KT just watching as D-plus take everything. This is Hextech Soul as well, cuz he's stolen these in the past. This is his bread and butter, but this is a dangerous moment for the KT jungler and D-plus. You can see they know that he is going to try for it. They burst it down, managed to take it out. Showmaker playing bouncer here to get rid of the Viego. Man, Showmaker just barely on the edge of the Nico ultimate finds the engage. BDD is gonna want that one back. He's gonna want a flash, but the damage has already been done. Dragon Soul obtained for D plus. KT are in emergency mode now. So they're gonna emergency Baron. Yeah, if uh, if uh, in case of emergency break Baron, is that <laughs> yeah, how it works, yeah. Kobe? I don't know about that one as they are going to get it down to about 50% health. D-plus, they know exactly what's going on, though, and they're going to set up in this river. KT going to turn because Cuz is so low. The Baron even taking an extra shot. The Viego is going to have to back away. D-plus 
full tempo all the time. This is exactly how they love to play League of Legends. It just doesn't often happen against teams like KT, teams that are generally ahead of them. Huge, huge stuff. If you're going to win some games versus a team, it's okay if you went 0-5 before Worlds. When you want to win them is on the world stage, so D+, plus choosing the right moment and really adding to the narrative of the lower bracket run yeah. of the underdogs here. And it's, it's still so sad, right, for KT because their run has been so difficult. But you still have to be able to string these wins together when they come up. Yeah. And KT are a squ squad that have benefited uh, from tough opposition, but are also one that can feel that pressure start to mount up. And D+. Plus. Man. It has been an easier road for them over the last couple of, uh, of games. This looks like zero bumps in this road, freshly paved right? this game so far. It is. It has been really good play. You know, props to Kellen for his early engages. Props to Stonebreaker in the previous team fight. Uh, but it really feels like KT has got to wake up in this series because currently they're just stalling in the next game. Yeah, and the, the thing that's a bit of a worry here is that Boosai has in general been a little bit stronger. KT high C, they got sad selection. Is that going to be a hook back thing? But on to the round. Likewise, on to three. And Kellen will help burn down the North. on this rise right now. Cuz wanting to try and find his way in, but look at this. All of D-Plus trying to get them out of the way, but Kane just gets that room prison down. Immediately they dive in there. Cuz is already going to nice. three and all the PDD. Where have we seen this before? As KT will wipe out D-Plus. Oh, oh, oh. goes down. It's an ace in trade for just Cuz. They do it at the Baron Atlas in case of emergency. Break it open. The late game carries are going to be able to collect it. KT, they gave up four dragons, two rare barrels, a bunch of kills, but they will not give up this one. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it's happened again, Kobe. Look at them just pop showmaker. And initially, you're like, okay, well, they traded Cuz for it, but BD sweeps in, cleans the entire rest of the team. And because they have two other huge carries on the team as well, Keen and Aiming, they're able to just melt D plus there. Death tried to do some heroics at the end, but one versus three carry battle, never going to win those. No, so KT are fully operational. They absolutely are. And they're 4,000 gold in the lead. And the Red Bull Baron power play is sitting at 2.2k. They were already ahead. Even before they managed to take that one down, of course, the team fight helping out. But with the fact that D-Plus have only been able to really scale when it comes to the Dragons, the gold being so even means that KT have a pretty straight shot if they can continue knocking down these structures, utilizing this Baron. So D-Plus, they're going to have to regroup now, of course. Hextech Soul, pretty strong. We're also going to have an Elder Drake on the Rift pre-30 minutes. Uh, and um, Cuz is pretty good at smiting those. And with this extra wind in the KT sails, could certainly be a, uh, another point of contention. Let's see whether D-Plus can mount a comeback, though, because this is their biggest test. As soon as there's a bump in the road, that's when D-Plus Kia fans get worried. There's a boulder in the middle of the road, and it is BDD Azir. Yes. This man knows the champion like the back of his hand. The team now is so much extra pressure, it's super easy to go 1-3-1 one, one at the moment because Keen is on his rise top three item power spike that you were looking for. He pushes out top side, aiming gets bottom side. They get the entire map closing in around D+. Plus. And D+, Plus, they still have the Hextech Soul. They still have a lot of uh, team fighting capabilities. But as we were talking about, like, I, I love that you see Keen walk down into that river looking completely unafraid because they know that D-Plus has to focus on so many things at once. The coordination from KT in that last fight, absolutely fantastic. And now, who matches the rise in a side lane? Yeah, nobody. That's difficult. You got to catch those waves at the tower or else Keen is just going to rip you apart. Looks like he's going for Banshees next as well, so it's going to be even harder to engage and pick. Harder to pick him off in the side lanes, also harder to engage on him for the team fights. And the big thing that won KT that last team fight 
was annihilating Showmaker. They went right for this, Nico. D-plus never got to have him on the offensive look, never got to be the one setting up the team fight on their terms. Once Showmaker is just neutralized there, they got to run over the fight freely. Well, Elder Drake has just spawned. Big Splitter gives information here to D-plus who have grouped up. They're gonna move on over. KT, think about just grabbing themselves in and they have control of the mid wave. Very, very important. Showmaker X skating over to get himself a good angle because over that wall and the drake has already been started d plus if at first you don't succeed go for the next neutral objective and see whether you can win that one showmaker gonna have to keep himself as safe as possible Deft, the same thing these equalizers from Kana need to be perfect 50 percent on the dragon kt biding their time waiting for their opportunity keen in the pit he's taken a fair bit of damage already that is not the real showmaker He's off the side of this wall. Realm Warp to get Keen out of there. That could be a bit of an advantage here. For DK. This Drake is down very, very low because these spikes are terrifying. There's the equalizer to act as a wall. Oh, steals it, but it's a four man pop blossom. Can they win the fight though? When they're against the Elder, that's the question. And Keen says no. Showmaker goes down. Emperor's divided up the county and the Dragon's Rock will bite him in half. And now the pop lane for KT. DK are trying to run away because. Ooh, into the fire. Not exactly where you want to be is can death actually do this possible one versus three angle with the teleport to come forward death wants to get rid of them these elder drake buffs are so scary he's not going to be able to get it done beat in the mid lane just trying to end this game yeah and aiming on the zeri here on the flank with the elder well death just going for one last shot in this game to see whether he can get something done but i have a feeling the dragon will say something <laughs> about it down to the ga and KT have him surrounded. There he goes. Aiming goes to 4-0-5. And Lahenson beat it E. We'll say goodnight to game one. It was looking awful. It was not looking great for KT. And then everything went their way. Just takes I, one little sweep. I have never seen a team so calmly give no, away no, the no. entire map yep. for the first 25 minutes of the game, including the Dragon Soul. But KT, they win the Baron fight, they win the Elder Dragon fight, and they're coming to, to win the game. Yeah, and uh, it's just them relying on the fact that Cuz is so good at getting these smites. I imagine they never thought that there was any chance that Canyon was going to take that. Because Cuz just gets those. He's really good at it. They flip them all the time. It bothers everyone at the LCK. And it seems to work out. Wow. And now it's a 10,000 gold lead, Kobe. Wow, wow, wow. I guess today I learned not to doubt KT scaling. I guess not. I mean, Let's, the thing is, we saw so much scaling lose yesterday. I know. I'm just We're doubting it at all, at all corners. Get, Cuz just walks ah! though. With the WQ, steals it, and then with the Elder Dragon execute, such a huge, huge power spike for them. Such a difference maker in these team fights. They're annihilated. BDD again onto the front line, pushes them back, has his own Zonias. You know already nobody gets out. They get two inhibitors for it. So the lasting pressure here from two inhibitors being down, KT have the luxury of getting another Baron for themselves and then just returning to top lane to finish the job. Yep, Super Minion's going to be helping them out as that sixth man in mid and bottom lane, I guess seventh, because uh, there's a couple of those lanes. So the Baron goes over for free, 12,000 gold the lead. Surmountability getting very low uh, here for D plus Kia. And the Rebel Baron power play is only going to stack up. The first inner turret is going to go down as far as this push is concerned. There's none more of them left available. Nine turrets to one. And we mentioned giving up the map, but they never gave up turrets. They were also able yeah. to cross map to get extra plates onto aiming as well. KT just biding their time, and it worked. Even being down in kills and down in dragons, they were still up in gold a lot of the time because yeah. of those turrets, because of the turret plates, because of the farm. They were they were just looking at their wallets the whole time. <laughs> Sometimes he's got to make the investments, you know. They yeah. knew exactly when to sell, and it was... Diversified uh, their portfolios. They were mm -hmm. calm. Oh, no I, I feel no like, panic selling here. I feel like most of their portfolio was Emperor's Divide. Um, <laughs> they had certainly a lot in that one. That's a good stock. Yeah, it is certainly good. Um, that one just tends to go up and to the right. As, okay, last Nexus turret. 
Left standing here for Deep Plus. They're going to go for one last team fight. And the Pop Blossom's decent into the back line. They do manage to get rid of the Azir. Aiming still alive, though, and Keen is just gigantic. That was actually the real showmaker, and he is going to fall down. But now it's Aiming who's in trouble. He's down to the GA Canyon, trying to keep Depth alive. He is going to be the win condition in this round, this one. But there are four KT members. Their health bars are low, but their damage is so high. Red White Guns, I don't think, are going to save TK here as Keen just realm walks on top. Whoa! Walks down the kill. That will be the ace, and that will be game one for KT. KT expert investors. <laughs> and we see an answer emerge for the Rumble. Keen, happy to farm it out. Go ahead, play Rumble.